Okay, lesson two. So remember in lesson one, we talked about what work and what power were um, and how they have to do with moving things and the amount of force you do. Then you guys did an assignment the other day that introduced you to certain types of simple machines. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit more about what simple machines are and specifically inclined planes. So first, what is a machine? A machine is a device that changes the force or increases the motion. So some things that we wouldn't even consider a machine, um, like the blinds, they are machines because they change the amount of force you need. A knife is a machine. Um, Bicycles are machines. So here are examples of things and how they change the motion or change the force. Um, so things like scissors, knives, doorknobs, they make the work easier because it's less force you're doing. Things like bicycles, they can increase the speed of your motion. Um, so all those are examples of machines. We have some simple machines. Simple machines do work with only one movement. So there's not a lot of complex things going on like a bicycle. Six types. Levers, pulleys, wheels, and axles, inclined planes, screws, and wedges. Screws and wedges fall underneath the category of inclined planes. We're going to be talking about those today. Next lesson, we're going to be talking about the other. So first, what is an inclined plane? An inclined plane is a slanted surface that decreases the amount of force you need to do. So, for example, um, think about a wheelchair ramp, right? A lot less force to go up that ramp than it would be to try to go up the stairs or try to lift the weird chair up to the doorway. A screw is a type of inclined plane that wraps around a post, but it's still think of it as like a slant. So you could think of it as like a ramp that just is twisted around that post. A wedge, so like a door stop could be, or it could be two different sides. Um, like if you're a skater, you're probably more familiar with that. But it could be two different sides that are attached back to back. Um, but we sometimes have have wedges that we also call wedges. Compound machines are when you have a combination of two or more types of simple machines. We'll talk more about these in the next lesson. But I just want you to understand the difference right now. Simple machines do one type of motion. Um, Compound machines have multiple types of simple machines attached to them. So an important thing to know about machines is mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is basically how useful a machine is. How much work does the machine do compared to how much work you do? Um, and I apologize that the equation kind of got put over the words here. But here's what the equation is basically saying. Mechanical advantage you find by dividing the output force. That means the force that the machine does, the entire force that's needed, over the input force. That's the force that you do. So we'll do an example before we get to that. Before we get to that, um, here's another example of what mechanical advantage looks like. So you have window blinds here. Another example of a machine not our typical definition of a machine, but it changes the force. So the input force is you pulling down. The output force is the blind actually moving, right? So those are the difference. If you had those numbers, you would divide them, you can get your mechanical advantage. So now here's our example. Let's say you have a crate that weighs 950 newtons. Remember, that's the unit for force. If you can use a pulley system to lift that crate with a force of only 250 newtons, which means even though the crate weighs that much, you only have to use 250 newtons. So this is a pretty good machine. It's a lot less work that you have to do. Then what is the mechanical advantage? Basically, that's asking how useful is this machine? Is it even worth it? Is the exact same force being applied? Let's find out. You're going to take your output force, that's the total force needed to move this, that's the 590, ah. and you're going to divide that by the import force, what you have to do, the 250. That's going to give you 3.8, which is about 4, which means that the work you do is almost a quarter of the work that actually needs to be done. So I'd say that's a pretty useful machine. And that is lesson two.